Does Delta 8 get you high? This is something I get asked about a lot. A lot of people in non-legal states where they can't just go get regular weed are asking about Delta 8. And I've tried it a few times. I have a little bit of experience with it, but I don't use it regularly. I have access to medical cannabis here in Florida, and I do most of my consumption through smoking flour and dabbing concentrates. But I have made a couple videos on Delta 8 before I decided to make this one because the other ones are got age restricted. And there's still some information I can provide. Before we get too deep into it, if you have any experience with Delta 8, go ahead ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know about your experience with it, good or bad. Did you try vapes or edibles? Because a lot of people go through the comments on these videos and they like to hear more people's experiences. And I do too. So Delta 8 is a legal alternative for getting THC for somebody who might not have access to the dispensary. It's legal in most states, but they've actually outlawed it in a bunch of states and they might do more and more in the future. And one of the reasons behind that is some of these states have legal medical programs or legal recreational cannabis programs. And they don't want the Delta 8 to compete with that because they get a lot of tax money from selling regular weed. They want you to go through the dispensaries and not just stumble into a gas station and get Delta 8 carts. But Delta 8 is very popular. Even dispensaries are selling it. I got this not too long ago from Truly, one of the dispensaries here, and it's a ratio pod with two to one Delta 8 to CBD. There's like 54% Delta 8 in here. I don't see these regularly, but you're not just getting them at the gas station or from random people making it. You can get it in the dispensaries. But one thing about Delta 8 is while it is naturally occurring, you can find it in cannabis and hemp plants. The majority of it out there wasn't extracted that way. Typically, Delta 8 is artificially produced in a lab through a chemical process. There are some people that claim that theirs is all extracted from plants, but the majority of it out there, the majority of the Delta 8 that you would buy was made in a lab from CBD. But I was curious about it. I made a video last year. I guinea pigged myself a little bit into trying it because I was curious. I was getting the question 10 times a day on my Twitch streams probably. Have you tried Delta 8? Does it get you high? Which if you don't follow me on my Twitch streams, you should smoke with me over there. We go live after 9 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you bring a clean bong. But I was getting asked about it a lot or uh, several times a day. I think this was in the beginning of the wave of popularity for Delta 8. So I wanted to try it. I have a video. I think I did about a gram and a half of concentrates. I was just dabbing a ton of it and it got me high. I obviously dabbed a lot of it, but I got high. It was similar to like a regular THC high. And I also later tried edibles. I ate about a thousand milligrams and it was shortly after I ate a thousand milligrams of Delta 9 edibles. I kind of wanted to get a loose comparison and it hit just about as hard. And the reasoning is because when you digest THC, whether it's Delta 8 or 9, your liver metabolizes that into 11 hydroxy THC, which gets you really, really high. Both Delta 8 and Delta 9 get metabolized into the same thing, 11 hydroxy THC. And that really gets you high. You do convert some THC through vaping and smoking to 11 hydroxy THC, but you get way more of it when you do edibles. So, a lot of people say Delta 8 high is a little bit more mild. A lot of people say from experience that they have less anxiety, less paranoia, which it's, it's hard for me to say because I really don't experience that either way. But a lot of people say when they smoke Delta 8, they don't get the paranoia or anxiety that they normally do. Hard to say there, but I would love to hear more about the science on that if they study it. But I do think the best way to consume Delta 8 is edibles, is eating it. You can get Delta 8 tinctures, edibles. You can get flour, which is usually just hemp sprayed with Delta 8 oil or coated with Delta 8 oil. And then you can also get Delta 8 oil dabs and distillates. I've seen diamonds and sauce. I've seen a few different things. But in my opinion, if I'm using it, I'm, I don't use it regularly. But if I had to go to a state where I couldn't get regular weed and Delta 8 was good to go and I could just get as much of that as I wanted, I would probably just get the edibles. Smoking it, dabbing it is pretty harsh. I typically don't cough a lot when I smoke, but Delta 8 is harsh. It's a bit different. I don't know if it's worse for you, if it should be vaped at a lower temperature than regular Delta 9 THC, but it's harsh as fuck. The best high that I did get from Delta 8 was the edibles over the dabbing. I ate a thousand milligrams and I think I dabbed up close to 1500 milligrams a day a gram and a half. And I would say that the edibles were better. Now, I did want you guys to comment your opinions on Delta 8 because I hear a lot of conflicting reports, a lot of conflicting stories. Some people say it doesn't make them paranoid, but I have heard a few people say it, it makes them more paranoid. Not as many that say that they don't get paranoid, but I have heard a few. I have heard people say that it stimulates their appetite and gives them the munchies. And I've heard people say that it suppresses their appetite and that when they smoke Delta 8, they don't feel hungry. I've heard a lot of things back and forth. That's why I want you guys to comment your experiences if you 
you've tried it. So it is interesting the world of cannabinoids out there. There's over 100 cannabinoids that can impact your high or help to aid your high. You've probably smoked Delta 8 before in the past. It just wasn't tested for in the bud that you got. And it was probably such a minuscule amount anyway, because it really occurs in tiny amounts. But it is interesting to hear about more cannabinoids. You guys have probably heard about things like HHC, THCP, THCO. There's over 100 cannabinoids that can all impact your high. So it's interesting that we're studying more. A lot of them are synthetic. And the reason is people are just trying to make money. They're seeing what kind of tricks they can do in a lab with hemp and CBD to sell you something that gets you high. But after a legalization, after everything smooths out and they're really just studying all this stuff, it's going to be interesting to see how many different cannabinoids affect your high or which ones give you certain types of high. I think a lot of people do end up asking about does it show up on a drug test? And I think for the most part in most drug tests, yes, it does show up. They're testing for THC metabolites, so they can't tell if it's Delta 8 or 9. They're just going to see THC in there from what I understand. I hope this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Cupins420 on Insta. And if you want to hear about the time I tried to help my friend pass the drug test and it went terribly wrong, check out this video. Have a lit day, my dudes.